All right, Splurge, how's it going, man? Man, what up? Chilling. Yeah. Thugging in LA. That's what's up, man. I see you like to come out here. Yeah, I'll be, I be fucking with LA. You can smoke that weed almost anywhere. That's what it feel like, shit, at least. I feel like you can smoke that weed anywhere. Yeah, they got a, yes. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it's everywhere. <laughs> well, um, well, we'll start from the beginning. I don't think this is our first time uh, working together. So um, mm -hmm. what part of Texas are you from? I'm from Arlington, Texas. That's like, for people that don't know where that shit, that's like, I would say in between Fort Worth and Dallas type shit. It's like the middle, you know what I'm saying? That's like, I mean, we, in the, we in the middle. Oh, uh, okay. Houston, like four hours away. Houston, a little farther. What was it like for you there growing up? Shit, man, same old shit. Just, I don't know. I really wouldn't even know how to describe it, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, shit. That's why I really just found myself at though, Arlington. That's what, it, that's what it was, me and my partners just, we always just wanted some money for sure. But we, we really wasn't even on no bullshit, bullshit, though. We stayed on bullshit, but it was always money. And I see this a whole bunch of money floating around. You know what I'm saying? A lot so, of money. So even at, when you were young, you were involved in the streets getting money, or? Like, I wouldn't even say just in the streets. I'm saying, like, from, from a young age, I've been, I say the young age, I was knocking at doors, taking out trash, you know what I'm saying? Then when I got a little older, that's when I kind of start figuring out how to maneuver and get money in the streets for real. You know what I'm saying? Try to conduct business in the streets. All right, were things more good? Were things more bad? Were, uh, you know, how was, it, how was everything? The shit was like, it, I wouldn't say it was just bad to where it was like, damn, I don't want to stay here. Damn, I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? But it's like the shit that we involved ourselves with, I don't think it was the shit that we was supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it was what we was supposed to be doing. It wasn't, we wasn't, we, we wasn't on no good time. You know what I'm saying? Really wasn't on no good time in between doing this and doing that, going to school, doing that. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it was all right. It was all right. It's really what you make it. To me, everything is what you try to make it. You know what I'm saying? We, we try to make our life a little different. But you know, the shit that we w was doing to make it different probably wasn't the best shit, but at that time, we didn't look at it as bad shit. You know what I'm saying? It was just normal shit. You know what I'm saying? Your environment. Yeah, it was just normal shit. It wasn't really, we didn't look at it as bad or, you know what I'm saying? Now I see it as, oh damn, I should never been tripping like that. Or, you know what I'm saying? Was there any serious situations that you came across when you were in the streets? In, in Arlington, it was, it was more, I'd say that that's when more guns and shootings and shit like that was involved. Shit like that was more involved. And then when I moved out of Arlington, I really caught my first case out of Arlington. That's what's crazy. Outside of Arlington? Yeah, I caught my first case out of Arlington. Uh, okay, what happened there? It was, uh, I had got caught in a stolen car. I really didn't get caught in the car. The motherfucker just broke down on us. The motherfucker broke down, we hopped out, ran, got tired of running. Them bitches drew down on us and everything. That was my first little case. That was a felony charge, of, uh, unauthorized use of a vehicle. In Arlington, I was a little, I was, I was more on some hothead shit. You know what I'm saying? Like some hothead, want to fight, whatever you want to do. That's what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? How'd you end up outside of Arlington? Where, where uh, where'd you get, where'd you catch the case at? I caught it in Euless. Euless, like. My mom, we moved there when I say like, I think I was probably in the eighth and ninth grade. That shit, when, I, when we first moved there, it was kind of, cause to me it wasn't like, it was nothing like Arlington. You know what I'm saying? The environment wasn't like Arlington to me. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like, it wasn't this fast paced. It wasn't this going on. Niggas ain't really was smoking weed or niggas weren't really carrying guns and shit like that. So it wasn't really a bad environment like that. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, the schools was all right. The schools wasn't really bad, you know what I'm saying? So when I was out there, it was that's when I show got introduced to more money. Like, like I'm around here. Basically, I was around people with money. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was kind of it was kind of like 
When I moved out there, I just ain't really, I ain't fuck with it for a long time. But then I started kind of fucking with it because it got, got my name everywhere. You know what I'm saying? I was able to go everywhere after that. You know what I'm saying? Like, being in Eulis, I started hanging with motherfuckers that already got cars and shit. And they 16, 15 got cars. So I'm going every, every city I can. You know what I'm saying? When I got around there, that's when I really just start traveling and start moving around like that. You know what I'm saying? How far away is that from Arlington? I swear, when we first moved there, that shit felt like an hour away. Oh, okay. But that shit, it's probably like, i say 30 minutes. On some real shit, about 30, 20 minutes. I, where I stayed at was 20 minutes, probably 15, you know what I'm saying? But that shit, when we first moved there, though, that shit felt like an hour. T. John was like, we moving to Euless. I'm like, what the fuck is that? You know what I'm saying? But How old were you when you guys moved? I don't know. I had. I feel like I was probably like 14. Oh, okay. And then, okay, so out there is where you, you caught your first case is when you probably started getting in more trouble? Yeah, it's when I really, because in Arlington, you got a whole bunch of people doing that shit around you. And you, you kind of stand out when you're doing some shit that you ain't got no business doing. You know what I'm saying? So it was more, it was easier for me to get in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Like, because in Arlington, like I said, it's more people doing that shit. So when you get into a fight or whatever, you usually don't even go to no alternative school or none of that. You can just go straight to the little detention. Woo -de -woo. They probably put you in de a detention or something for like three days. And you, they on all bullshit. They, 10th grade, send me straight to alternative school. 11th grade, try to do the same shit. So it was like, it was way different. You know what I'm saying? So it was, e for me, it's easier to catch a case out there than it was in Arlington. It, it wasn't. And plus, I was a younger age doing doing shit that older people was doing, so they really wouldn't probably look at me as that. You know what I'm saying? At a younger age, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, what were you doing stealing a car for? Just to, just for the fuck of it? I ain't gonna, <laughs> I ain't gonna say I stole it, but it was it was just, bro. Nigga was trying to do anything. That was transportation. Okay. I say that that was transportation. Just anything to get it. Anything to get some money. Tired of calling niggas, giving niggas gas, money, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I didn't steal no car though. I was never the type of nigga ever, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, okay. You was just in it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, yeah. I got you, I got you. Did you go to jail or they just. I went to little... juvenile. I was 15 then. I went to juvenile. I was either 15 or 16. I'm probably 15. I think oh. I was in there. I think I was in. Ten, probably summer, summer going to 10th grade. I think I was going in 10th grade or summer. How long they have you in there? You know, in Texas, juvenile, they come, you call, they call your mom, they come pick you up. Oh I'm shit, first like stolen car right then and there that night? Yeah, hell yeah. Damn. Juvenile and shit like, that shit wasn't nothing. Yeah. I thought, I thought they was gonna be on some bullshit though. First time going to juvie, you know what I'm saying? I ended up doing probation for that shit though. Like they put me on like a six month fair probation. Then I ended up getting in some little trouble again at school. They extended the probation like a little couple months. And then I got off that shit. Cause I went, in, I went to this shit called JJ and got my GED. You know, that's part of the probation. When you're a minor, you gotta finish school, go to school. I couldn't go to school for shit. So I just went to JJ and got my GED like during the two, three weeks. No bullshit. You know, man, I, I was when I was researching everything, I, I came across the interview and I was shocked to see that Yellow Beezy said that he never heard of you before. Yeah, a lot of people were shocked. Is there anything to that? No, nah, I don't know what's to it, shit. I don't know, it really ain't, you know, I don't know him and he don't know me. Like, we never built, bumped shoulders, none of that. Like, real talk, so I don't know, but shit. You know, I don't really believe that he ain't know who I was, but I don't know, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what was to it though, really. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, shit crazy. You guys never met or bumped it backstage or anything like that, no? Never, never met him before. As you were growing up, who were some rappers who inspired you? I say Bank Road Fresh. Bang Row Fresh was a nigga that I was like, I adapted to the shit he was talking about. You know what I'm saying? Just getting money. Cause I feel like as, as, as a young nigga, I was doing a lot of shit. All the people wasn't gonna do to get money. 
You know what I'm saying? I was doing a lot of shit niggas wasn't doing to get money. So I was just relating to Bankroll, one of them niggas I feel like I listened to. They really, he, he the only nigga I feel like made me want to do music for real. He made you want to uh, do music and, and make you want to get a lot of money. Yeah, made me want to be the richest nigga out of my neighborhood. <laughs> oh, okay, I uh, recently I interviewed Tay Capone and he was telling me how he seen Chief Keith get rich. And yeah, that was that was some shit we seen too. You know what I'm saying? That was some shit that we looked at too. That was like, damn. He, what was what? Chief Keith was like 16. 16 I think 15. so. Like yeah, 15, 16 or some shit. Yeah, we seen that shit too. I was probably like, I don't know, I was probably like 11, 12. I probably I was probably like 10 <laughs> for real. I was I was young. Oh, okay, when you started to have money. That when I was like that age, I probably was doing shit like at my grandma's house or something, asking for money at my grandma's house, oh, okay. doing some little work or some shit. Have you bought anything like ridiculous since you started getting money through this rap shit? Shit, no, nah, not really. I ain't really bought nothing ridiculous. I ain't really into that shit. I spend a lot of money, but I ain't really into buying just crazy shit, you know. You buy a lot of weed, or? I spend a lot of money on weed. How much would you say you spend on weed? Shit. I ain't gonna lie. A lot. A lot. That's why I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I gotta, I gotta have a lot of weed to smoke on. Cause I don't, I don't like niggas, I don't like making niggas rich. So, I gotta <laughs> have my own weed to smoke on. I don't know, decent prices and all that, you know what I'm saying? I hear that. I like your, I like your piece, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's uh, who'd you say that was from the Rugrats? Uh, Chucky. Chucky from the Rugrats. Yeah, okay. It's by Johnny Dane. Johnny Dane made that for you? Yeah. Okay. How much did you, if you don't mind me asking, how much did you pay for it? I spent twenty on, twenty five on this and twenty on my Cuban. That's nice. You got the teeth too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Got permanence. I've been having these for a minute though. It's about that time to go crazy again. Were those the first ones you bought? The first big purchase you bought? That I had a I had a pullout grill at first. Oh, okay. So that was the first. That was the first. Yeah, that was, I'd say like that was the first like big bundle of money I spent. Was on a grill. What um? What made you want to get a grill? What, you had a grill before a chain? Yeah, I had a grill before I had a chain. What made you want to do that? Most people want to get the chain. I just wanted the grill. I don't know what made me want the grill for real. I just wanted the grill. Like I just wanted my teeth to be iced out. Oh no, I wanted my teeth to be iced out first. Cause I knew the chain was gonna come. You know, eventually you're gonna get the chain. Have you ever turned down a lot of money for a feature? Mm, not really. No. Yeah, cause I feel like I ain't never really just. I never really charged that much for a feature for real. Like I have, but I never really, I don't be charging that much for no feature because I barely do them, you know? So most of the time, I show love to somebody, you know? I don't really. But I have I have turned down a lot of money from a feature from my partner before. One of my partners tried to pay me some money, and I was like, nah, I can't do that. I can't take no money from you for a song. <laughs> Shit ain't nothing. I think I seen you mention in the interview that the police had told you that they like, they get shit from the internet? Yeah. So, it was a little situation that I had that occurred in the city. And they had, we had to do a, you know, it was like a meeting, you know? And it was just pretty much giving me a warning. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, a damn near a fair warning for real. Like, it fucked me up. Like, it made me realize, like, damn, I gotta chill out. Posting guns, doing that, doing that. You know what I'm saying? When you catch cases and all that shit, all that shit just add up and they just look at you crazy. Then on top of that, you got music out, you talking crazy, you got guns on, you know, so it was a situation that I had and they told me they they learn shit from the internet. They know this and this from the internet. You know what I'm saying? So it was one of them just doing little wake up calls real quick, you know? It was one of them things, but I told them folks, I don't fuck with nobody. You know what I'm saying? Told them straight up. They come, anybody come fuck with me, gonna get what they, get what they, you know what I'm saying? 
It wasn't even, it was the gang unit. It was a gang unit in Texas, in our city, in our little area. It was a gang unit, you know what I'm saying? And there was a little dude, he was with some type of fucking program, you know? And my mom just wanted me, you know, cause she, 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 like, don't get it wrong. Anybody know my mom, they know she know, she with all the fuck shit. But far as me going to jail and doing this shit over some bullshit people, she wasn't with all that, you know what I'm saying? So like two weeks of them, she telling me, oh, she got somebody to go in a little program and do a little program in Fort Worth or something. I'm like, I don't really want to talk to them. I don't got nothing to say. But that was pretty much just saying, well, I mean, you keep going on this road, it's easy to build this type of case, it's easy to build this type of case, and they don't even got to be off you. If I put a diss song out about you, and I say, oh, fuck you, woot you, I shot, I shot at you, you tried to shoot at me, woot you, in the song, I just gave the police information that they would have never knew mm. until I said it in the song. So when people do shit like that, it bring attention to you, you know what I'm saying? So that shit brought the wrong attention to me, so I had to leave that shit alone, man. I had to leave that shit alone, you know what I'm saying? They asked me about some shit I ain't had nothing to do it with. I ain't had nothing to do with shit. I told them I don't, I don't know what, I don't got nothing to do with shit. If y'all wanna do, cause, cause the, the shit that occurred, it was my peoples. They know that it was kind of like we been cool before. So they kind of wanted to keep it before they start doing some bullshit. They wanted to keep it, okay, we know y'all know this side. We know this side used to fuck with this side. We gonna try to keep it like this. Mm -hmm. But it was like one of those situations where I felt like I ain't start, you know what I'm saying? I ain't start nothing. So if that's the way to the end, that's the way to the end. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't really care too much, you know, but it just made me realize I can't play with niggas on the internet and do all that and go to jail and Rico case, organized crime and gang cases and just bullshit that niggas is trying to make up in their music. You know what I'm saying? So I had to leave that shit alone for real. So you're not, no more guns in the videos for you? Or if you do, they're gonna be props? Definitely prop guns, you know? Definitely. That's all you use anyway, Definitely right? prop guns, but it's, it's like, niggas, niggas dry snitching their music. Niggas will dry tail on you in their music for no reason. I don't make diss songs, I don't do none of that. I don't mention dude's name and so I don't put niggas on YouTube, I don't do none of that. Mm. Cause that's police work, cause the police told me that's basically how they get the information. So if they get the information, that's police work. You know what I'm saying? So I gotta learn how, you gotta learn how to move around that shit. I don't even get on live or none of that like that. I barely get on live, you know what I'm saying? I try not to get on live, because they record everything now. I record everything now, you know what I'm saying? The police? You think, oh, you- No, also I'm you... just saying, people do. Oh, and it's right. there for the police to see, you know what I'm saying? Right, so you, oh, okay, you say record your live, and then upload it to like YouTube or Instagram or whatever. You know, so I don't, I don't play on the internet. I don't do none of that. You know what I'm saying? I don't do none of that, bro. These niggas be snitching for no reason. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the internet's, the internet's wild, man. It can, it's a lot of, you know, it's just dope. The internet's dope, but there's also like a lot, it's like kind of a responsibility too. Cause it, it's just, everybody can see you put whatever you put out there. Yeah, know? I mean, shit. You know, that's why I don't fuck around. You know, because them folks had motherfuckers knocking at my mama's door. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I don't need this for my T Jones. I'm like, let me leave these little rappers alone and let them rap about whatever they want to rap about. Whatever gangster stuff they're going, they supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I hear that. You know, recently, they arrested some dudes for Pop Smoke's murder. I don't know if you had a chance to see that. I was seeing some shit about that. You know, they made a big deal about people knowing where his location was. And and it reminded me of, like, a while back, man, uh, the baby got mad at a fan for taking pictures of him when he was with his kid. And he was mad because he, he didn't want anybody knowing where his location was. You know, mm. and then after Pop Smoke got killed, you know, the, the, you know, the internet was like, you know, everybody knows why the baby didn't want him, you know, knowing yeah. where anything was. Yeah. You know, what do you think about all that? I mean, man, that shit, that shit crazy. That, that some shit like that really happened. 
that was a simple mistake, you know what I'm saying? Like, minor, like, little shit, you know what I'm saying? And it's fucked up that this is niggas that's really going to go do that in, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, I, we don't let nobody really, you know, we never take pictures of where we, where we never, of course we're going to take pictures of where we at, but so you, we not, you're not going to do it a certain way, you know what I'm saying? You're not going to really just be like, oh, they right here, or be able to pinpoint they right here, you know what I'm saying? I just think that was some, that was a simple mistake, bro. Really, like, that shit, that shit crazy that it happened like that, you know, that shit, the way that that happened, I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it, for real. I uh, real shit, it. man. That was that somebody would. I mean, even the odds of somebody that wants to rob you actually checking out your yeah, Instagram. I, I recently, at the exact I recently time. just took a picture and like, I was at a little spot and they told me they was like, "Oh, you got the address in the back," but it was just the door. Mm. It was just like a. It was probably probably seen like two numbers, but that shit kind of made me think though. Still, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, people really pay attention to shit like that. People really do pay attention to shit like that. It is dangerous yeah, being a rapper. Yeah, like, it, you is, gotta be it is pretty dangerous. You don't know who really called himself an op or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You don't know who really your enemy. Yeah, it feels like rappers like targets. Big nowadays. targets. Big targets. You know, not I mean, not just for being killed, but for being robbed or you yeah, know, all they that. out to get you. If you're a rapper, they definitely out to get you. They wanna see what that shit about. They wanna yeah. see what that shit about. You know, recently FBG Duck was also killed in in Chicago. Mm -hmm. You know, in a, the best part of Chicago in broad daylight, man. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people linked it to his location too. But you know, uh, what was crazy is when I was going through researching you and, and you know watching old videos and everything. I actually found that Duck had left uh, a comment on one of your lives and. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't I don't remember exactly what you were talking about, but Duck was like, let him hate, bro. We still shining on him. Mm hmm You know? Yeah, I remember that shit, too. I remember that shit, too. That, that one of the things I thought about when I seen him, when I seen that shit happen. It was, it was, it was, it was just some shit I was just, you know, I ain't had no business speaking on it, you know? Giving, giving people attention that don't need attention, you know what I'm saying? When you just so big, it don't even like, I'm not even saying I'm so big, but when people don't mean shit to you like that, I mean, it really ain't no, no point in entertaining that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I think Duck, Duck was a nigga that, you know, he was, he said a lot of shit about a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? He said a lot of shit about a lot of people. You know, and shit. You gotta, you gotta, the universe gonna, gonna, Gonna make sure that they teach you, you know what I'm saying? The universe gonna teach niggas, you know what I'm saying? It's fucked up that shit happened, but move on, move in the right way. And I wouldn't even say, I, cause I, I feel like as a, as a man, you really, you, you can say what the fuck you wanna say, but you just gotta know when you say certain shit, this is what's gonna come with it. But that's a possibility, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know that when he, when he said that, I was already on some shit like, yeah, you right. But once that shit happened, I was already, I was definitely on some, yeah, bro, definitely right. You know what I'm saying? He 100%, he for sure right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah you guys never, unfortunately, you guys never got a chance to no, link we, up. No, we never did no music, but you know, back and forth in the DMs and shit, like, he was cool. We never did no music, though, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the fan. I mean, you know, the fans kind of hype things up too. I feel, but I, you know, it's just kind of both because you know the rappers they know they're doing it for, you know, whenever there's any drama, it's yeah, that's they know I, they know the fans are gonna hype it up and you know it just that's that's the thing why you can't even do it for the that's why you can't do it for the internet, you know what I'm saying? Because it ain't personal once it's on the internet, it ain't shit personal no more once it's on the internet. All that type of shit should be personal to me, you know what I'm saying? Mm. That's personal. It's not, unless it's, it, 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 cause I see some shit that is internet beef. If it ain't internet beef, it's personal beef. You know what I'm saying? So, you gotta know the fans gonna hype anything up if they can. They gonna blow anything up if they can. Yeah, and the, the way things are, I mean, you know, unfortunately the negative stuff gets the, the most attention. Yeah, that's why so. I don't, man, I don't, yeah, I, I see all that shit. That's why when, 
you will never see me getting posted, going to jail, none of that. I don't know nothing negative. You know, I try to keep that negative shit away. Cause that's what they that's what they want to pop. Anytime somebody go to jail or they even die, they get famous. You know what I'm saying? Shit fucked up. It is. It seems like you get, well, it doesn't seem like you definitely get more love when a rapper dies, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know? That's, that's what's fucked up about it, for sure. People gonna show that, show that love, but I mean, it ain't even, I can't, sometimes some people don't be showing fake love, you know what I'm saying? Some people realize, don't realize, they don't, they don't really know what's going on until the shit happen. They don't really know that, they ain't really know Nipsey was that powerful until he was he was gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, they ain't gonna notice until that's, yeah, that's, that's what's true. fucked I, up. I mean, you know I had saying? no idea. I mean, I'm from Cali. I didn't know he was, you know, putting all yeah. those people. To, and and you I'm know, from Texas, so everything. you know, we show we know. Of course, we know Nipsey Hussle, but we didn't have no idea. We don't have no insider. You know what I'm saying? So I seen a lot of people from Texas fuck with Nipsey that I didn't know, and I wouldn't even call it fake love. It's just. Shit is just, you know, they didn't know until he was gone, you know. It's impact, a good point. Sometimes impact. it's not fake love. Sometimes you just didn't know what, to, you know, you didn't know you that didn't it was know, there. You know, shit, because it had been a few artists that sadly they passed away and they, I really didn't tune into their music until then. Mm. But, it, I mean, you know, to me, I feel like shit, it's still a, that's still a legacy, though. You know what I'm saying? that anybody should want that when they die though. You know what I'm saying? Not the fake love, but you should want people to recognize this what the fuck you was, you had going on. You know, that you should want people to know the real you, what you had going on, you know what I'm saying? There's a few people that I tuned into after they, after they died and I was like, oh bro, pretty decent, you know what I'm saying? That yeah. shit crazy though, that's how that shit work. Yeah, the fans, you know, I think they're just being fans most of the time. They probably, yeah. I mean, it's not like they, you know, they don't probably don't know much better. Yeah, they don't intentionally go give somebody three million followers when they only had 700,000. I mean, shit, they shocked, somebody shocked the world. That means somebody shocked the world, you know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. Yeah. Yeah, have you had any situations with any crazy fans or anything? Like, like just, what you mean crazy, like? Uh like approaching you or yeah. doing anything wild? Yeah, it was, I wouldn't say he was a fan, but it was my little partner, you know? He just, he knew the apartments I stayed in. We stayed in the same apartments. It was my little partner. We stayed in the same apartments, but he, when he used to see me, he used to flag me down like, hey, Spurs, what the whoop? So my partner dropped off his whip, you know? I, I never had this whip over there before, you know? I'm right by my T. Jones crib, by my mom's crib. I hop in the whip with my girl and my partner. You know, he just, he, he start waving at the car. It's like nighttime, it's like 10, 11 at night. He start hitting the car, then he pull on the door, you know, and I reacted to that, you know what I'm saying? I reacted to that in, in a bad way. So I said that was the only situation that I really came across that was just too crazy. For the most part, fans really don't be walking up on me crazy. They don't really be, they be walking up and they just, you know, most people ask me like 10 feet away do they want a picture, you know? Mm -hmm. Most people got respect. Most people just see me have respect, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, What can you say what you what you did to the guy or? Yeah, cause it really, he, that's my little man. So, um, I damn near shot him, you know what I'm saying? I damn near shot him for real. <laughs> but thank God I didn't shoot him. He just had a little glass and shit in his face, you know what I'm saying? But. You know my no little, way. yeah, my little dude. He was straight though. He good though. He rap now. Shout out my little dude, man. People gotta be careful. Fans gotta be careful. Yeah, they gotta be careful, bro. Especially yeah. now with you know rappers are on high alert. Yeah, with, you was, know. Yeah, every, and it tripped me out because it was just right outside my mom crib. Like you know, I wasn't really, you know, like I was going up at the time, but I still stayed with my mom and shit. So I was kind of high profile. But people know where I live. You know what I'm saying? So. It was, was just I had to stay on alert at that time, so it was like, you know, couldn't go out like that, you know. Yeah. Was this in your own city? Or nah, was this, this somewhere this, else? This was when I, this was in Eulis. My mom at my mom's apartment's in Eulis. Oh, okay. when she stayed in Eulis. Yeah. My little man, he cool though. I fuck with him, he cool.
Yeah, be careful dealing with rappers. Yeah. For everybody listening. Yeah, because it, it ain't even nothing personal. It's just shit. Bro, you got families to make it home to, so it's going to definitely be you before me. You know what I'm saying? I hear that. You got a new song. Yeah. Uh, fell Off. Yeah. What was your inspiration for making that? That was really pretty. That was like my first song back in the studio. I didn't go to the studio for a long time unless it was like a feature, paid feature. And I was like, man, you know, I was just, I was at the time I was just reading comments, old splurge, fell off, whoop, whoop. Uh -huh. I was never on, but okay, we, that's gonna be the first name of the song. And that, then, that's what I, I just ran with that. That was my, that was the, all I was thinking. Okay, they think I fell off, I got something. I'ma show them, you know what I'm saying? Motivation. Shit motivated me. So you don't feel like you're uh, you've got to where you, you're gonna be. Not even close. You know what I'm saying? I don't, not even close. I don't even think. Hey, do I got a video with even five million on there? No. I ain't got a video with five million on it. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like I haven't even got there yet. You know, for me to even go down. You know what I'm saying? I'm still going up. To me. But you have multiple videos over a million, though. You know, yeah, a lot of them over a million, you know, but it was never no song that was just a breakout song or just a song that I'm just big for or a hit single. Not to me, you know what I'm saying? Not to me. I never really had no hit single, not to me, you know? Which song do you think is your most popular so far? Um, most of my old shit are pretty popular. Free Granny. Intro part two, of course, beat by Jeff, shit like that. A lot of people fuck with the most. I've seen that you turned down a lot of record deals. Yeah. When I think when you first started getting over millions of views and stuff. Yeah. What was that like? I just feel like the situations, most situations weren't for me. You know what I'm saying? I always want to be my, my own boss. I feel like you ain't never going to have no power when you getting all type of situations, you know what I'm saying? I'd rather be a boss for real. Were they offering you a lot of money? Yeah. How much were they offering you? I got, I probably got, I got a million dollar offer before. Turned it down. Yeah, that's that's I, a lot of money to turn down. But I know it ain't, I know it ain't gonna be a million up front. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I know it's gonna be a million, then minus whatever they spent on promotion, then minus whatever they spent on feature, producer, studio, um, then whatever tax take out the shit, you know what I'm saying? Whatever they take, that's not even no M for real. That shit gonna be gone. Then you're gonna wanna go buy a chain, you're gonna wanna do this. Your people gonna call, oh, I heard you signed a million dollar deal. That shit gonna be gone. You know what I'm saying? We don't even wanna bring that type of attention to me or even put that on my conscience. I got a million dollars coming. Cause it's not even real, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it ain't even real. So I was like, I wrote the grind it out, touch an M on my own, you know what I'm saying? Plus, you own everything. You're in control. That's you know? that's that's the that's the best feeling when you you know what I'm saying. You do what the fuck you want to do. Whenever you want to do that shit. So you ain't got no deadlines. They can't like, oh, we don't like this song <coughs> for the single. You know Drop what whatever you, you want. Yeah. <coughs> Do whatever videos. Most of my music ain't even mixed. I know a label wouldn't even accept that shit. 